in the workshop. A quick look at a model steam plant which was bought online. There's nothing wrong with buying from the internet via the auction site that we all know and love, but it's not the same as having a hands-on if you buy something from someone in person. This steam plant was sent to me by a customer who asked me if it was possible to pipe it up to the boiler, and when I saw the photograph that the customer sent, it didn't seem like a very difficult or expensive job until I started to look more closely at the steam plant. The first thing I noticed was the gearbox isn't actually screwed to the baseboard. The screws are jammed in the brass angle that support the gearbox, but then the screws just sit in holes in the baseboard. They're not actually screwed into the wood at all, and it doesn't rotate. The coupling was fitted too close to the water pump, and all I had to do was move it forward on the shaft. So now at least the gearbox rotates. What about the engine? Is this going to work? I connect some compressed air and yes it does, it works quite well. But to be perfectly honest, I did miss out some of the video because the first runnings of this engine were not a pretty sight. The flywheel was possibly the most out of line I've ever seen a flywheel. The crankshaft is bent at both ends, but now it's not bent quite so much. How did I do this? How did I straighten the crankshaft? I straightened the crankshaft using some controlled pressure very control pressure, but I'm not going to go into any detail about how I did it. Suffice to say, the crankshaft is not as bent as it was originally, and the engine runs quite well. Sort of. The drop arms are kicking back and forth, both in forward and reverse, and this is quite common on steam engines. And on small brass steam engines like this one, it can be a problem. The drop arm on the right hand side is working loose, and you can see this happening if you just watch the video. The left hand side one is ok, but the right hand side one is starting to move back and forth. Keep your eye on it and you'll see what happens. I've worked on quite a few similar engines to this one. They're generally made in China, and they're very well machined, it's all computer machining. From my experience though, working on Chinese engines, I do find that there are problems with them. This bracket on the chimney, it's not in line with anything. I think it's probably supposed to be in line with the safety valve to take a pipe but who knows, it could be anything. On the surface, the boiler looks very well made. It's quite an interesting construction, I'll show you that at the end. I think the reason that the boiler is wobbling about like this is because it's been damaged in transit. It's quite a tall, thin kind of boiler, and part of this boiler, mainly the chimney, was actually sticking out of the box. It was surrounded by some polystyrene, but nevertheless it was sticking out of the box, and it looks like it's had some leverage applied to it during the journey. But thankfully, once again, this is an easy fix. I'll remove the boiler from the base plate and straighten out the base plate. Having another look at this gearbox, it's very well made. It's a pity that the steam plant is not assembled properly. I'm using an Allen key to slacken off the grub screw to reposition the input shaft. For me, the big problem with things like this is the choice of materials. The gears are beautifully cut and it's a real precision piece of engineering. Even the gear shafts have ball racers fitted. The only problem is though, it's not made from the right material. This brass would wear very quickly. At the moment I'm giving these gears a little bit of a treat with some of my magic lubricant with the anti-friction additive. And if you've been watching some of my other videos, it's just a mixture of a thick oil and a thin oil with a special ingredient that I add to the oil mixture. The propeller shaft connections were actually tied to the output shafts with a piece of cotton like this. I'm just removing the second piece. It's a very interesting piece of engineering because it has an integral water pump and once again the whole assembly is very well made. But when you put it all together on the baseboard, look at this. I don't know how anyone can do a job like this, but the problem is time. If I was to pipe this plant, that's one thing. If I was to put everything right that's wrong with it, the bill at the end of the job would be excessive because it would take quite a lot of time. And that's not including any faults that may occur when I start to run it on steam. I've been in this position many times before. I once worked on some Chinese engines and they ran fine on compressed air. I put steam into them and they stopped working and all that came out of the exhaust was some black stuff, which was the piston rings. The piston rings were made from the wrong material. As soon as I admitted steam and the cylinders got hot, then the piston rings melted and came out of the exhaust and the engine stopped working. 
And while on the subject of stopping working, if you look now, you will see that the engine is not wanting to go in reverse. That's because the arm at the right-hand side has finally come completely loose and it's not moving. I have found that you can often get these engines to run quite well, but it really depends on how they're made. This one's quite well made, but it still uses little grub screws on plain shafts, and also the eccentrics are just punched out of sheet steel. And yes, they work, and from a manufacturer's point of view, this is a quick way of making a lot of eccentrics very cheaply and very quickly. A Japanese company called Saito, spelled S-A-I-T-O, make a model steam engine with eccentrics made in exactly the same way, and maybe they seem to work, but I cannot see small pieces of steel wearing very well on brass eccentric sheaves. In this clip, I'm tightening up the drop arms to stop them wobbling about, and as you can see, that's a bit better, but the clearances through the brass are not terribly good to start with. In my opinion, engines like this are best kept as ornaments. They're quite a nice talking point if they're just on a shelf in a study, because they do look very nice indeed, but there are so many problems with this steam plant, I really don't want to go to the trouble and the expense for the customer of putting it together as a working steam plant. I really don't think it would go the distance, and I'm also doubtful as to how the boiler's supposed to be fired, there's no burner, it's not a gas burner, although I would think that that was probably the original idea. But even if the engine was perfect, it's more than just piping it up. I would have to do a hydraulic test on the boiler and find a suitable gas burner to fire the boiler. And also, the engine's timing is slightly out, so that would need fixing too. So what I'm going to do for the moment is remove the boiler from this bent base plate. Then, once I've removed the boiler, I'm going to unbend the base plate and flatten it out again so it sits properly on the wooden board. It's only held in with one screw anyway, which is a bit mad really. Although when I think about it, it's just as well. Had it have been firmly held down to the baseboard, then more damage would have occurred with the packing being a bit strange. Here you can clearly see the arrangement of this one screw that's holding the entire boiler to the baseboard. After I did this, I used a soft hammer to level out the base plate again. And once I got it perfectly flat, I screwed it back in place. There's no more wobbling about, it's flat to the baseboard now. I'm temporarily refitting the brass screws around the perimeter of the base plate, and I will send this little socket with the boiler so the owner can put it back together at home. When I repackage the steam plant to return it to the owner, I'm going to pack the boiler separately within the package so it cannot be damaged. Looking at the boiler more closely, it seems very well made, but I know nothing about its construction and it would definitely need a hydraulic test before being put into use. That's all I've got to say really. When you're buying something on an auction site from a photograph, bear in mind that a model steam plant is a very complex device, and you can't always tell how good it's going to be from a photograph. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.